Have you taken a first aid training course recently? And if you did, did it cover those injuries and illnesses that can occur while you're out in the woods? If not, how do you know what the contents of your first aid kit are supposed to be? Well, I may not be able to answer all of those questions, but I do have a first aid kit here from Wild Med Kits that may cover at least the worst of those things. If you're interested, keep watching. All right, before we get started, I want to thank Wild Med Kits for sending me the remote trauma first aid kit so that I could share it with you. Now, the short backstory on this is I didn't ask for this. What I actually asked the company to send me was the Mora Cans Ball. Uh, and when I had done my research and I was looking to purchase one, they were selling them for the least expensive price in Canada. So when I reached out to them, they told me they weren't going to carry the Mora any longer. It was something they brought in for a short term and it was not something they were going to continue with. However, they had looked at my YouTube channel and thought they would like to send me a first aid kit to review, which was great. I accepted it was something I was looking for uh, anyway. However, when the first aid kit so there was the Mora. They had tossed it into the kit with it. And I've reviewed that separately. And I'll put a link to that review at the end of this one if you're interested. Okay, so yes, this is the Remote Trauma First Aid Kit. This is going to cover the more serious things that can happen to you while you're out in the woods. So what I thought we would do is go down to the tabletop and have a look at it and talk about its contents. All right, before we dive into the contents of the Remote Trauma Kit, from Wild Med Kits, I do want to give you this disclaimer. So let's get started. First off, I am not a doctor and in no way should anything I'm about to say or show you be interpreted as medical advice or first aid training. Now, having said that, I do have some experience in this area. So I was a police officer for 36 years in a metropolitan area. On top of that, I had 15 years working as a paramedic part-time. And in addition to that, I volunteered as a master instructor trainer with the Canadian Red Cross Society teaching first aid and first responder. Now, the next thing I want to say is, a first aid kit does not replace proper training. First aid training should actually precede the purchase of any kit to help you determine what your kit should include. So now, if you have taken your first aid training, then take a look at what are your most likely injuries or illnesses that you may encounter while you're out in the woods and ensure your kit is going to address that. So once you purchase a kit, Take it home, open it up, and dump it on the table. Go through every item in your first aid kit and make sure you know how to use it. You really do not want to be grabbing the tourniquet and taking the plastic off of it if you're bleeding seriously and you really don't even know how to use it. You must take it out and, take, and ensure you know how to use it. If there are items in this kit that are beyond your skill level, beyond your training, then you should not have them in here. Now, the only exception to that is if you're going out with more people and somebody else on the trip has advanced training that can make use of those items, then it wouldn't hurt to leave them in, of course. Make sure you know what's in here. Make sure that every need you have or may have is also covered. And a good example of that is medications. If you have your own prescribed medications, then make sure that there are multiples of them in your first aid kit, just in case you are out longer than you expect to be and you have those medications at hand. Okay, now that we've gone through all of that, let's take a look at the self, uh, look at this kit. So right off of the top, it's the bag. This, this is more important than most people give it consideration for. You need a good quality bag that is one, large enough to hold everything in it. And let's just talk about that for a second. This is a big first aid kit without question. This is bigger than most people would take with them, certainly on day hikes. I wouldn't carry anything quite this large. But if you're going out into the woods and well into the backwoods, maybe on a canoe trip or an extended trip of any type, and there's a risk of serious trauma, this is a trauma kit, remember, then all the things in here are going to be something you really should consider taking. Now back to the bag itself. 
A high quality bag is all important. You want something not only large enough to cover to contain everything in it, but you want something durable enough that it will last over time because quite often these things get carried a lot more than they get used. You also want something that is versatile in the way it is deployed. In the inside, as you'll see, you want to have it well organized so you don't have to go searching for the items you need that you know exactly where they are and they make sense where they are. But let's just take a look at this bag and I'll show you some of its key features. So on the back, you can see it does have Molly attachment strips, which you can put on the outside of any bag that has Molly strips as well. Now, what's nice about this is, is the bag is ready. You don't have to dig to the bottom to dig it out. You can actually send somebody to your bag and say, grab the first aid kit. And here is a great thing about this one. It's so well designed. You'll see that there is a Fastex buckle and strap that wraps around the top of the bag. If you really want to get this kit off of the outside of your bag quickly, then all you really need to do is exactly this. Un unfasten that, that uh, buckle and and it rips right off of the bag. So now you can run back to the situation without having to carry the whole backpack with you. I think that's quite a nice feature. I expect more often than not, that feature is not going to be made use of a whole lot, but if it's an emergency, then it's great to know that it is there. Now, once you have uh, brought the kit to the location, then of course you open it up. Now, zippers are also important because as most people would recognize who's been through emergencies is that you lose fine finger coordination under extreme stress situations. So you want a bag that's easy to open with a good quality zipper that allows you to really just rip it open so you don't have to get, you know, worry about it jamming up the zipper. Also a feature of this bag. All right, now that we've talked about the bag, let's take a look at the contents. Here's the first thing I'm going to say. When I got this kit, and yes, I opened it up and I went through every item in it, and in fact, well, the tourniquet, which we'll talk about, I ended up taking out of its wrapper because it's no good inside of its wrapper and you need to get at it quickly. But I was so impressed with the thought that went into all the contents in this. This kit does cover, uh, cover all the major injuries that you're likely to uh, um, encounter out in the woods. And we'll talk about examples of those injuries in a moment. But it also has this little pouch and this little pouch kind of folds out out of the way gives you access to everything else. But in this little pouch are the small things, the things that, you know, this by itself would be as big as some first aid kits that many day hikers like myself would like to take. So it's got all the small things like band-aids and that type of thing. But we're going to take a look at that in a moment. So going through this, uh, I, I was so impressed with the contents of it. Really, there's only one item that I'll show you in a moment that I think is questionable whether or not it belongs in there. I guess if you have the space, it wouldn't hurt to have it, but um, we'll get to that. I think you'll know what I'm talking about in a minute. So right off the top, right here on this side of the bag are the things that can really save your life or someone else's life. And that is this cat tourniquet. So this is a, the current generation cat or combat application tourniquet and a nice bright orange color. The only thing that was holding it in was just an elastic band. So if you ripped at it, the elastic band is going to give away. Again, this is not a training course, so I'm not going to go into the application of the cat tourniquet, but this is virtually one of the best I have ever seen. I can say that quite clearly. And being bright orange is a real advantage, not only for you finding it, but once it's applied to a person, there's little chance that you're going to miss seeing this on the person. And that's especially important for first responders who uh, uh, are there to transport the casualty out of the woods or wherever you're at. Great, great piece of kit. And the other thing that was right on top was this uh, quick clot. This is not quick clot by brand, na brand name. It's Hemcon Cheeto Gauze. So this is a package of uh, gauze that's impregnated with a clotting agent, which you would literally pack in to the wound. So it's a gauze that will, when packed into the wound, will help stop bleeding. So in fact, these two items would often work together. So we'll just put that over the side. Again, right on top is a CPR mask. So this is a one-way valve. It's a small, compact one. You can certainly get bigger 
and even better ones for sure. But this is a small, compact, one-way valve that you would place first in the mouth of, just over the top, really, between the lips of the casualty, and it will spread out a vinyl cover over their face so that you can give them rescue breathing with little chance of any back uh, wash, if you will. Nothing from their mouth is going to get into your mouth. So nice little kit. We could talk at length about whether or not it's a, it's the uh, something that you would probably use very much, but we'll leave that. That's uh, according to your training. So we'll take that out of here. The other thing I like that's right up front and easy to access are the trauma shears. Now, this is a smaller set. It's not as big of a set as I would have carried when I was uh, working as a paramedic or even as a police officer in my, my trauma kit. This is a small set, but certainly still capable. These things are a must-have. There's just no question. Don't try and do the things that this can do with the scissors on your Swiss Army knife. And certainly don't try and do it with any belt knife that you might have. If you need to take the clothes off of somebody or cut through their clothes or their belts, their boots or anything else, these will do it and they'll do a good job of it. So very important to be kept right up front. Also nice is the fact nice is the fact that there is this duct type type tape. Also again bright, very sticky, very easy to rip, and not a lot of tape. And maybe you could might want to add more tape to your kit. But this is that type of kit uh, tape that you want right up front, also for trauma applications. So we'll just put that out of the way here. Right behind it, in its first uh, pouch, if you will is even more compressed gauze. So this also can be used for wound packing, if either on top of or in a replacement for that uh, clotting agent gauze. So this is a gauze that helps pack deep wounds to help control bleeding. So that's also there. You can see it's all sealed up and it, that helps protect it from, uh, from any contamination. So it's sterile inside of this. This is not something you want to open up prior to just to take a look at. Trust that it's inside of there, but you do, again, need to no, know how to use it. All right, so those are the major bleeding things that are right on top where they need to be bleeding and also airways. So we've got airway and bleeding covered. So now right in behind that is the SAM splint. And this is a malleable aluminum splint. Let me take this out. Also orange, another great choice. And we're not in a combat situation. We don't need anything in olive green. This is a piece of kit that also requires requires training. This is for joints and bones primarily and it can be formed into shape. It's aluminum covered with thin foam and you can form it into shape. Yes, there is a little bit of instructions on there. Take training. Don't go by those instructions on how to use this thing. And uh, yeah, it, it's, it's a great piece of kit. Now, here's the truth of it. If you're way in the backwoods, Unless there's an absolute need to transport somebody yourself or somebody to try to walk out, then uh, this is something you put on more to keep the injury from getting worse rather than give them the mobility to walk out. Reality is they need to be uh, evacuated by an aircraft or search and rescue, but yet just the same for maybe minor injuries that just need a little extra structural support or to give support and, and protect, pre prevent further injury until the rescue can get there. That's where this plays in. This is only one. And a lot of cases you actually need more than one of these or you need to improvise something else, but it's great that you have at least one to start with. Behind that, in every first aid kit, her triangular bandages. These ones are vacuum sealed, so you get two triangular bandages. And anybody who's taken even the old school first aid courses know that these can be used for a great number of things from you know splinting to wrapping to uh, holding your arm in position and other things. Uh, so yeah. Great, and the, actually, the these are kind of like the do-all type of a thing to have that the, you can do an awful lot with these. There are items that are more specifically designed for certain injuries, but these can be applied to a whole lot of them. So it's worth practicing with these. You could take one of these out and practice with it and get a little better on it. It doesn't have to be sterile. The reason they're vacuum sealed is for size inside of this kit. All right, let's move to the other side. So right on top. Two key items, and let me pick that up at the pen I just dropped. All right, sorry about that. I dropped my permanent marker over the side of the table. So this is included. It's a Sharpie, but this one is from Amazon. Permanent, marquee, uh, permanent marker. 
This can be used for a couple of things. Most of the time, it's used in the association with the application of the tourniquet so that you can mark on the person, right on the person, right on their forehead most of the time, TK and time. TK stands for tourniquet and the time of when it was applied so that first responders know how long that tourniquet has been applied to that limb because it will help determine the viability of saving the limb and whether or not it's actually effective of it doing what it's uh, supposed to do. Now, having said that, it has other uses. I'll show you in a moment. So I will hold that out. A syringe. This is a sterile syringe. It is a 30cc syringe, and this has a great number of uses, but the one is most applicable for this situation is wound irrigation, so that you can draw up the cleanest water you have access. I'm not going to say sterile, but the cleanest water you have access to get dirt and anything else out of a wound. Uh, not the most comfortable thing in the world, having done it, but it is necessary. It can also be used for eye wash, but uh, you got to be really gentle with this. and also can be used for irrigating burns. And I say the cleanest water because, as I said, you may not have access to sterile water, and but even if you're using just pond water or, or stream water, it's better than leaving the dirt in there. You may introduce some infectious materials, but that can be dealt with afterwards. A lot easier to deal with that than it is to deal with the dirt that's in a wound if it can be taken out with you using a little bit of irrigation. So nice piece of kit. I can see absolutely using that. All right, right in behind that, two pair of nitrile gloves. Now let's just talk about this for a second. Why do you even need these? Most of the people think, see these as a personal protective piece of equipment, and they are. They can help protect you from getting stuff on your hands that may be infectious to you. But here's the reality of it. If you, unless you have cuts on your hands or scrapes or burns or something, some type of an opening on your skin, your skin is actually just as effective at keeping infectious materials out of your body. That's what your skin does. But gloves do serve a purpose when, for you in working on a casualty. They prevent you from passing on dirt on your hands into their wounds. And it, it's one other thing is when you learn how to take them off properly, according to training in a first aid course, there is a good way or a safe way or a most efficient way, we'll say, of taking them off of your hands, then you're, you're less likely to touch your face or anywhere else and pass on anything that their blood or any bodily contents onto you and, 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 and get it into your body through like through the eyes or the mouth or anything else. So they do serve a purpose, but it's not just because you've got blood in your hands. That's not going to hurt you. It's more that you don't get it in your eyes and your face and you don't get dirt on your hands into the wounds of the casualty. So that's the purpose here. This is a large compressed gauze bandage. Again, it is sterile in the package, so you don't need to open it up, but this is a stretchy type gauze, not the ones that you would use for wrapping limbs for pressure like an ace bandage. This is a gauze bandage that you would use for wrapping up. You could use it in conjunction with this, which is that compressed bandage we talk about, which can be wound packing or surface wound uh, dressing and this can be used to apply to keep it in place and put pressure on to uh, uh, stop bleeding. However, having said that, there are as a couple of items I'm about to show you that this works even better with. So let's get down to it. All right, let's we'll leave that for a second. In the back of this portion of the bag is a Ziploc with a number of items in it. So let's just dig into the Ziploc. These are things that I found you can never have too many of in your kit. The more that I could get in there, the better. And that is, this is called an abdominal pad. Really, it's just a fold-out sterile gauze dressing that can be applied to, uh, well, primarily wounds so that it will absorb and you can absorb blood and you can apply pressure to from the outside to help control bleeding. So it's, I found that we went through these a lot, especially on the ambulance. You just, you know, you could pack them and you reuse, not reuse, I'm sorry, but you know, remove them, put another one on top of it if you needed to. But there's one in this kit 
You can buy these from the Wild Met kits as an addition to your first aid kit, but I've also seen them in drugstores as well. Underneath that are some more simple gauze, what we used to call four by fours, uh, four inches by four inches or 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. These are sterile gauze, so they can be used on less serious wounds to, well, they can be used for coverage when you go to wrap them up and they will be sterile protecting the wound, or they can be used for simply just wipes as moving away as much blood as possible so you can see the wound and, and look at it and determine what kind of a treatment it needs. So there's two of those. And these are the last two things in that pot, well, the, not the last two things, but the last two type of dressings. These are what's called a Telfa dressing or non-adherent, Telfa being a brand name. But these are great for two types of wounds specifically. One is burns. If you're going to cover a burn, these are non-stick dressings because there's nothing worse than having a dressing put on over a uh, an area injury like a burn or a scrape, even like road rash or scrapes of any type. These things go on. Blood does not soak into them and cement them to the skin so that when you pull them off, it rips and starts everything going, uh, bleeding again. Very great uh, to have these two types of dressings non-adherent dressings. All right, what else is in here? And this is something that's often missed in first aid kits. Well, to start with, okay, there is a little inventory of all the items that are inside of the kit, and you can take a look, and when you use them, you'll know what to get when you go back to the Wild Med Kits website if you want to order replacements. There is a wilderness first aid guide and a whole lot of information in this. I mean, it's some very basic information such as judging the, the amount of burns on a body, the things that you were taught in your first aid course. Uh, yeah, lots of good information here. It does not replace first aid training. Let's, I keep saying that, I know, but it, uh, this is a reminder or access to resources that you might need in an emergency. So do take this out, do look at it, do become familiar with what's in this. And the last thing, and this is the thing that's often missed is these are the notes that you want to take when you're assessing a trauma victim or a severely ill person. So this is where you get all the information down, things that you can get, information you may be able to get from the person if they're still conscious, while they're still conscious, such as their medical history and that type of thing, because once they lose conscious, this is the only place that a first responder is going to be able to go to get that information. It also details not only all the assessment that you've made, but all of the um, interventions that you have applied. Assessment is important. By the way, despite the fact that we're often taught that you do a primary and then a secondary assessment, those are terms from your first aid training, once you've done the secondary assessment in a wilderness setting, you continue to do it. It's not a one and done. It's something that's done every period of time. So, so important. And mark down what you find as you do the subsequent assessments. Why would you want to do that? The primary and then the secondary is going to give you a baseline for changes. So whatever you find when you go to look at the person again a few minutes later, you'll know whether there's a change for the better or for the worse. And you have that recorded in this. So all the categories of the things that you want recorded are right there on this paper. And that's where this comes back in. It gives you a means of marking that all down and keeping notes. This may not be enough, but it's at least a good start. And the categories here you can also use by putting them in any notebook that you might have with you. All right, that's everything. Oh, it's not everything in the kit, is it? There's also the minor stuff. I call it minor. It's, it's a matter of perception. But what is in the little kit? Well, there are two little bags. So the first one. And I don't need to take this out to show you, but there are two things. On this side is a type of honey that can be used as a form of glucose or sugar for someone who is experiencing uh, a diabetic emergency, specifically and more commonly, if they have uh, taken their insulin and haven't eaten. So their blood sugar drops dangerously low. This will give the initial shot of sugar to help them maintain consciousness and long enough to feed them a proper meal that will give them the blood sugar they need to go on. On the other side of this are rehydration salts or 
electrolytes. So there's a package here that you would mix up in water, presumably, and uh, then give the person. That's very, very important. If they have been dehydrated due to um, they've been out and active and haven't been taking enough water, or they become injured. That's another place that rehydration is very important is after an injury, especially if they've been bleeding. Just a quick caution. Again, this is not training. If you're going to give somebody the, uh, the electrolytes that are in this packet because they've been bleeding and they need to replace some of the fluids they have lost, do it while they're conscious, not, not any other time. And I know that this is often taught in first aid courses that if someone is going to be going to the hospital, you give them nothing by mouth. And that's primarily because we don't want them uh, re not regurgitating this, but having any contents in their mouth or their stomach going down into their lungs. And that's the reason for it. But if you're in the wilderness, this is like oral IV, and like, unlike a, a paramedic might do where they start an IV in the person's arm to give them fluids to boost their blood pressure, replace some of the lost fluids. Then if they're conscious and still able to swallow without gagging, then this can be added to any water to help replace those lost fluids. And of course, with lost fluids means lost electrolytes. So good little package you have. You can put more inside of here or less, depending on what you think you're going to need. And the last thing, this is the miners. This is all the little band-aids and uh, wipes and topical cooling gels and just some small things like that probably the things that most of us are going to dig into most often. So are there, is there anything missing from this kit? Well, how would you know unless you've done that assessment based on your training for the most likely injuries? I can see a few things I'd want to add, maybe some more tape because Boy, it's, it, tape is like cordage. You can never seem to have enough. Tape is one of those great things that you can do so much with. I'm thinking maybe moleskins uh, for uh, blisters or hot spots before they turn into blisters on your feet. Uh, so those are a few things I could add. Oh, yeah. Here's one thing. I'm going to show you right here. Tweezers, right? So these are fine pointed tweezers. What would you want those for? Well, the two things that come to mind right off of the top are splinters. I think that would be the number one. And then ticks. So again, know how to uh, deal with both. And then they give you a good set of tweezers for doing exactly that. All right. That's everything in this first aid kit. I think it's time we wrap this video up. All right, just before wrapping this video up, there was one more item. It's the thing I took out and set aside because this is the one that is controversial, at least for me, uh, whether or not it belongs in a first aid kit. This is a space blanket, sometimes referred to as an emergency blanket. This one was provided by the Canadian Red Cross Society. Uh, my personal feeling is, no, they don't belong in a first aid kit. It's no harm in having it there, but the problem is, is there's often is a reliance on these as a means of keeping a casualty warm. They can if they're used correctly, and they can actually be harmful if they're not used correctly. That's topic for another discussion. Having it there is uh, not necessarily a bad thing, although it takes up space. I think I would take this out and put it elsewhere in my in my backpack uh, for emergencies, yes, or it could be used as a signaling device, so it does have some dual use, but primarily these are not what people think they are. They're not a warm blanket. That's the, that's the, I think we'll cut that discussion off and we can pick up on it another time if you're interested. Now, let's wrap this video up. All right, at the risk of repeating myself yet one more time, I just want to say again, this first aid kit, no matter how good a quality is, and this is a really good quality kit, does not replace training. You must have training, know how to use all the contents of this kit or any other kit for that matter, and then you'll be more prepared for being out in the woods. So once again, I want to thank Wild Bed Kits for sending me this kit so that I could share it with you. I'm really impressed with this kit. By the way, when you go to the Wild Bed Kits site, you'll see that there are a number of alternatives that you can look at. Once again, the owner has really thought through all of the options that he's put together in each of these kits, providing you the ability to add things to that kit if you want to as well. The links for this I'll put in the video description below. If you have any comments or questions, please put those in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.